Let us pray. Speak, Lord. Speak a word. Speak a word of truth. Speak a word of power. Speak a word of hope. Speak, Lord, for your people are listening. In Jesus' name, amen. Home. When I say the word home, what comes to your mind? A place where you grew up? A particular town or a house? Or maybe a place of memories, particular sights or sounds or smells that you could never forget. <laughs> or maybe a place that you long to go back to, or not, <laughs> but whatever the case, it's part of your story. For my husband Brian, he grew up in a house on Vine Street in New Wilmington, and his parents still live there to this day. And so for him, there's a part of him, I think, that will always think of that place as home. For me, I went to elementary school from one house, went to middle school from another house, went to high school from another house, and from college I came home from from, for summer break to yet another house and I packed up my belongings to move to my first job from yet another house. My first job was in Washington, D.C., and it's a place that's very transient. So as I met people, they would usually introduce themselves with three things, name, job, and where they were from. I'm from Kansas. I grew up in New York. California is my home. So what they were telling me, I think, is that this place, D.C., is not my home. I am not at home here. They were longing to go back to the place they call home. And this longing that we share, I think, is expressed in an oldie but goodie John Denver song. You know where I'm going with this, so if you want to sing along at home, nobody will hear you. So sing with me. <laughs> Country roads take me home to the place I belong. In this case, West Virginia. But it could be anywhere that we call home. Home is where you hang your hat. In Brian's case, his hat is still hanging there in New Wilmington. <laughs> For me, my hat has been packed and moved many, many times. For all of us, though, I think there's something inside that longs to go to a place we call home. Home can be not just a place, but people, right? So wherever we are gathered with family, loved ones, people that we know and love well, our church family. Well, early in our marriage, Brian and I spent a lot of time on the road traveling back and forth between our parents' houses in Pennsylvania and wherever we lived at the time. And so we got to know uh, this old Billy Joel song that we would sing as we drove along. It's called You're My Home, and it goes something like this, if I can remember it. Home can mean the Pennsylvania turnpike, Indiana's early morning dew. Wherever we're together, that's my home. So home, you see, is not just a specific settled place, but home can actually be a feeling that we get when we are with people that know and love us well. A place where we are safe and secure. A place where we're comfortable letting down our hair or being seen without shaving or without our makeup on where we can try and fail and try again. People who teach us life lessons, people who tell us the truth even when we don't want to hear it, <laughs> people to laugh with and cry with and pray with, 
people to share our hopes with. Home is a place. Home is where we hang our hopes. But what if our hopes are dashed? Then where do you go? Well, today, home has a different feeling for us, doesn't it? Home is not a vacation place or even a family reunion. Today, home is an order. We are ordered to stay home in order to stay safe from COVID-19. And so we may have different feelings about home these days. For some, it may feel less like a Norman Rockwell painting and more like a Jackson Pollock painting, messy and scattered and colorful. For some, home might feel less fun and more frantic. Home might feel less calm and more crowded. For others, home might feel less leisurely and more lonely. But for all of us, home is a place that we can't escape the tragic news of the coronavirus. And so we look for ways to escape, ways to soothe us. For some, it's avoidance. For others, alcohol. For many of us, Amazon shopping! But what we long for most, we can't do. To come to our church home, our sanctuary, where we can can find our hopes renewed. And so we are troubled. Jesus' disciples were troubled, too. They didn't have a home, a place they could hang their hat. They were on the road. And so they found their home with the people that they traveled with, one another, and with Jesus. And Jesus was where they hung their hopes. He was the one they had hoped would defeat evil, would usher in the kingdom of heaven, the one that they hoped would rule with righteousness forever. And yet, he said he was going to die. And they were troubled. So on the night before his death, he spoke these words of comfort to them. He said, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Trust in God. Trust in me. In my Father's house, there are many dwelling places. If I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. Jesus promises a place in the Father's house. Father's house. When I say that word, what comes to your mind? Most people would say heaven. But there are many different images for heaven, so I learned this week at Bible study. (laughs) One shared that the the image that she has is a giant mansion, a huge house filled with bunk beds. Another said a garden, a beautiful garden with trees and flowers flowers and animals and birds and rainbows in the sky. Another said that she can't wait to get to those pearly gates where she will see her whole family there welcoming her home. Another said heaven is a place where there will be no more tears No more sorrow, no more pain, no more disease, no more death. Just peace. So whatever your image of heaven is, Jesus says there's plenty of room there. 
the Father's house. It's not just a synonym for heaven. In John's gospel, location means relationship. And so when Jesus says, in my Father's house, there are many dwelling places, that root word dwell, it's not just talking about a geographical place or even people or even heaven. It means communion. It means a relationship with God, wherever that is. As Martin Luther said, God is where we hang our hearts upon. Our grateful and giving hearts, yes, but also our worried and wounded hearts, our lonely and longing hearts, our troubled and trusting hearts. Home is where the heart is, and home is where we hang our hearts on God. But how do we know the way? Thomas asks us on our behalf, right? How do we know the way to a place where we can trust enough to hang our hearts on? Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. The way does not mean a route or a road. It means a relationship with God. The truth is not something we have to prove, but it's a gift given to us from Jesus. The life is, is not something we have to make for ourselves. It's a promise of abundant life on earth, eternal life in heaven, and abiding life with God here and now. Whoever comes to the Father, whoever comes to, through me, comes to the Father. The good news is, whoever comes to the Father through Jesus is welcome. Through Jesus, everyone can come to the Father. Through Jesus, everyone can come home. Jesus brings God's home to us. And God helps us come home to ourselves. It begins with grace. It ends with grace. It's grace all the way down. And so this way, this truth, this life that we find in Jesus is captured so beautifully in one of the most beloved hymns that we sing together. And you know where I'm going, so feel free to sing it with me at home. Through many dangers, toils, and snares, I have already come. Tis grace has taught, brought me safe thus far, and grace will lead me. home. It's a place. It's people. It's a promise of eternal life and its presence with God here and now. So although I moved a lot as a child, I have a good memory, wonderful memories to, to, to treasure to this day. But I was thinking about one in particular that we always used to watch particular shows growing up. And one that I liked especially was The Wizard of Oz. As you know, it's the story of Dorothy who is lost and she's trying to find her way back home. And so she looks to the heavens as if to say a prayer and she sings, Somewhere over the rainbow, way 
stay up high. But then she's also given the down-to-earth advice to look down at her feet where she's standing here and now and to tap her feet together and say there's no place like home. There's no place like home. And she found her way back home. So friends, this is true for all of us. There is no place like home where we can hang our hats. There's no place like home where we can hang our hopes. There's no place like home where we can hang our hearts. There's no place like home where we can be with God. Right here, right now, we are home with God. Always. Thanks be to God. Amen.